Remember this Christmas dresser that I did? It never sold, so it's time for a makeover. And here is my inspiration photo. If you wanna see how it turns out, stick around. Hello everyone, welcome back. I did a previous video on this dresser. I took the time and made and glued on all those snowflake decals. I added the reindeer decal, changed the hardware, but after two Christmases, this piece never sold. It has been sitting in my garage collecting dust. So it is time to remove the Christmas, give it a whole new look, and hopefully get this piece sold. First step is to remove the hardware. On the original makeover, I did add these crystal and silver knobs, which are absolutely beautiful, but they don't really match the new look that I have in mind for the dresser, so I will save them and use them on a different piece. For the Christmas theme, I added gobs and gobs of snowflakes. And yes, I made every single one of those individual snowflakes, glued them on there, and put wax on top of them to color them. And now they all have to come off. I originally used some industrial strength adhesive to glue those snowflakes on, so they are super stuck. I grab, grab a flathead screwdriver and a hammer, and I just go through and knock off each one of those snowflakes and I repeat this process over and over until the very last snowflake is gone. So why didn't the Christmas dresser sell? And this is what I think. This dresser is a simple classic look and adding all the gaudy snowflakes and the reindeer, I did too much for how simple and basic this dresser is meant to be. So maybe something to think about whenever you are flipping furniture is a simple color change, maybe a little bit here and there, but try not to steer too far from the original look of the piece because it just doesn't go together and can take away instead of adding to a beautiful piece. So my thought is to hopefully take it back to more simple to help it sell faster. After knocking loose the last snowflake, I look down and my garage floor just looks like a Christmas party massacre. I hope Jack Frost is safe and okay wherever he is. I'm working my way through removing off everything that isn't going to stay on the dresser. Next up is this reindeer wall decal I originally found from Walmart, I believe. It's thicker than a regular furniture transfer, so it's pretty easy to use my nail to start the edge to lift up and then pull the remainder of the decal off. After removing the reindeer and snowflakes, this is where I'm at so far. Next is to remove the modern legs. I do want to keep these modern legs, but I want to do them a different color. So I lay the dresser on its back to make it easy to remove them for painting. In the video, I seem calm and collected and just working away, but I didn't realize that there's a spider crawling across the bottom and the front of the dresser while I was working. If I would have noticed that, you probably would have heard me scream and freak out. With the legs now gone, I put the dresser on these rolling wheel dollies. So the dresser is still lifted off the floor, which makes it easier for painting. Okay. 
Now, I originally finished this piece and then it's just been sitting in my garage for the last couple of years. It hasn't been manhandled, gotten a lot of fingerprints all over it. So I grab a damp cloth and just wipe all the dust that has gathered on the surface. Next up is to scuff sand. I use some 220 grit sandpaper and scuff sand the entire surface. Then I went over the reindeer impression and the snowflakes where I have ripped them off with some 120 grit sandpaper and then went back over those areas as well with some 220. So the entire surface is nice and smooth and flush. After all that sanding in the snowflake areas, they no longer look like little snowflake impressions. They definitely look more like Warshak cards. Next, I wiped away all the dust from all that sanding. So I know I no longer want to use the crystal knobs, so I count the drawers in however many handles and start digging through my supply. And I don't have 10 handles of the same one, but I did find the original handles that came on this piece when I bought it off Facebook Marketplace. The only issue is that they were double holes and not single. So my next step is to get my drill and drill back out the hole that I originally wood filled. Then I clean, scuff sand, and wipe down the legs and the handles to get them ready to paint. On the dresser, there are some spots where the snowflakes were that got ripped back to the MDF and I use water-based products which makes MDF swell so I'm adding a shellac layer for a protective barrier between my water-based product and that exposed MDF and then I let that set overnight. The next day I can fill a few little bumpies where I spray the shellac so I use a 220 grit sanding sponge just to make it completely smooth and then wiped all the sanding dust away and any dust that collected overnight to get ready for primer. To prepare the drawers for spraying, I did tape along the sides and put screws in on the back sides that are easy to pull in and out as I'm spraying. For primer today, I am using Kills Primer in Gray. This has become one of my favorite primers to use. It is water-based, but I feel like it has more blockage and protection, more like a shellac-based primer does. This piece has been primed and painted before in the past by me, so I feel pretty confident just using a water-based primer only this time. I add a little bit of water to my primer to thin it out so I can spray it through my 3M AccuSpray gun. If you've watched a few of my videos, you can see that I never strain my paint or primer. That's because I have a built-in filter in my lid so I don't have to strain it beforehand. Once I get my paint and gun all assembled together, the next step is to attach it to my 30 gallon air compressor hose and then test spray on the wall. Before I add any paint, any paint primer, top coat, I always test spray my wall or a board to make sure that I have the settings on what I need it to be. So if I mess up, it's messed up on scrap wood and not my actual piece of furniture. I spray two coats of the Kills Primer, allowing it to dry an hour in between each coat. I 
I usually prefer to leave my drawers inside the body of the dresser when I spray. When I do that, here's a process of how I leave my drawers in but still get them completely sprayed. First, I line all the drawers up even and put a line of coat down each side to spray the sides of all the drawers at one time. Next, I will come back with the spray and do a horizontal spray and go across the top of every single drawer and then push the drawers in. Once I have the outside trim of all the drawers completely sprayed and they are all pressed in, I come back and do the face or the front of the drawers. I have to admit it is kind of nice to see the old snowflake areas being covered up and prepared and ready for a whole new look that hopefully goes with the look and feel of this dresser a lot better. Next after primer is paint and I knew I wanted to go with a green but I'm just going to play with the paints that I have and come up with a color. This is Foxtrot from wise owl it's old you can see there was a big clump in there and i'm just trying to use up the remainder of some paints that i have in the workshop and also remember i've already flipped this piece i've already invested money into buying things to flip this and i don't want to do that again since i'm remaking it over again so i add some greens and dark grays and just play around with the colors I have in my workshop already in stock and end up making this really beautiful deep forest green that I am just absolutely in love with. I spray two coats of the deep forest green on the dresser and the drawer fronts and I only let it dry for about 30 minutes in between each coat because this is chalk paint so it dries a lot faster and it's about 93 degrees in my workshop today. So this stuff dried super duper fast. Once I spray the second coat on the drawer fronts, I let them dry and take the drawers out so I can come back with my gun and add just one layer of paint to the trim. And this really isn't visible, but it is back behind the drawers and there's little tiny cracks and slippers that you can see. So I do go ahead and add one coat to this inside trim. For the hardware and lugs, I am going to use gold. I like to use this Rust-Oleum metallic gold. I spray a couple coats of the gold on all different sides and angles so to make sure they have complete coverage. When the gold paint was dry, I came back with Rust-Oleum Clear in a gloss finish and add a couple coats of that for protection.
before top coat on the dresser i use a 400 grit sanding sponge to lightly go over the surface to make sure it is super smooth wipe the sanding dust away and then i am ready to spray my top coat And sticking with my theme of not really wanting to put any more money into this piece, I have a couple of top coats. They're all water-based, so I can mix them. Just a little bit left in canisters, and I mix those together. So one is a matte and one is satin, so we're going to have an in-between matte and satin type finish. And I put it directly into the canister that I had the paint in, so I have a little bit of that paint to tint my top coat to help with streaks. This really helps whenever you are spraying top coat on top of dark colors. I spray two coats of the top coat and allow it to dry an hour in between each coat. Now we are to the final touches. So I put the gold legs back on the piece. When I remove the painter's tape from the drawer sides, there is a little bit of line from the green and still a line from one of our originally sprayed the piece blue. So I just used some 120 grit sandpaper and a sanding sponge to clean up those sides and then came back with a damp cloth and I wiped the sides off and then also the insides of the drawers as a courtesy. To keep the back of the drawers from pulling off the paint on that inside trim, I put a little piece of felt on each side of the drawer. The last step is to put the hardware back on the piece. Once I have all the handles on, this piece is done. Here's a quick reminder of what the piece started like. Also a reminder of what my inspiration is. And then this is what it looks like now. I think I did a fantastic job nailing the correct paint color from my inspiration photo. This dresser is no longer over the top and super gaudy. It is simple, classic, and I'm hoping that this look will help it sell a lot quicker. I hope you enjoyed this flip. That is all I have for you today. Until next time.